Assalamu alaikum. After discussing the rotational spectra, now we are going to discuss the vibrational spectra. And for vibrational spectra, we have to know about the vibrational energy level. And for vibrational energy level, we first consider the simple case of diatomic molecule. A diatomic molecule, when it is sufficiently excited, it can vibrate as well as rotate. So you see here in this uh, animation that a diatomic molecule it is vibrating as well as rotating. So the vibrational spectra is, in that sense, a, a bit complicated as compared to the rotational spectra because it consists of the contribution from the rotational energy level as well. For example, uh, you can see from this plot that the potential of a diatomic molecule is represented by this plot and you see here we have different values for v is equal to 0, v is equal to 1, v is equal to 2 is equal to 3. So these are known as the vibrational quantum number and each vibrational quantum number consists of internal rotational quantum number as well. So here because one vibrational energy state consists of large number of rotational energy state. So when you excite a molecule from one vibrational state to another vibrational state, so there are excitation of the rotational state as well. So that is why the vibrational spectrum is a bit uh, uh, complicated. It's a hybrid spectrum which consists contribution from the vibrational as well as rotation. So today uh, we are going to discuss the vibrational energy level uh, because we have already discussed the rotational energy level. So the potential energy of a diatomic molecule is represented by this equation number one consists of two terms. The V0 term, this is known as the electrostatic potential and this arises due to the interatomic interaction. The second term, this is known as the elastic potential and this arises due to the extension in the bond line. So uh, we can uh, determine the force that bind together these uh, uh, atoms of the molecule by just taking the negative gradient of this potential. So uh, we get this equation. And if you look into this equation, so this is the um, restoring force of the spring. It, it means that the uh, molecules of a diatomic, uh, uh, diatomic molecule uh, undergo a simple harmonic motion. So if you look into the um, uh, frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator, so for uh, example, a mass attached to a spring with a spring constant k is given by this relation. However, here in the diatomic molecule, we have two uh, atoms are attached to each other, one with mass m1, the other with the mass m2. So if the position vector of the mass m1 is x1 and if the position vector of the mass m2 is x2, so the instantaneous uh, separation between the two masses is x2 minus m1. So if we have L as the equilibrium length of the spring, and x is the elongation produced in the spring during this vibration, so what we have that the uh, uh, separation between the two masses at any time uh, x2 minus 1 will be equal to L plus x. So here um, this is uh, the case of elongation. So uh, the restoring force F1 uh, acting on the mass M1 is directed toward the right. So we will take it positive and the restoring force F2 acting on the mass M2 that is directed toward the left. So we will take it the negative. So um, as, as we have the restoring force F1 is equal to K1x and now applying this the Newton second law. So we have M1 d square x1 by d square is equal to x. Now you just multiply uh, both sides of this equation with the M2. So you have M2 M1 d square x1 by d t square is equal to M2 kx and this is equation number 5. Similarly, we can do uh, the same treatment for the restoring force F2 and the only difference is the negative sign because this is uh, directed toward the left. Now, if we subtract the equation 5 from equation number 6, so we have this relation 
and after further simplification uh, you are here at this uh, equation and we know that this m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 represent the reduced mass so we uh, uh, represent it here by mu so uh, you have this equation now if you look into uh, equation number four so that is x2 minus x1 is equal to this one so we can put uh, this value instead of uh, x2 minus x1 so in the previous equation it was uh, x1 minus x2 so that is why we put here a negative sign and when we apply the differential for this equation so l is constant so this goes to zero so what we are left with this equation and if you you arrange this equation so you are here and this you know that this is a very well known uh, equation for the simple harmonic oscillator from this equation we can find the frequency of the simple harmonic oscillator which is given in this equation number eight so if we solve the problem of simple harmonic oscillator quantum mechanically so uh, we obtain the vibrational energy level in the form of equation number nine where this v could be equal to zero one two three and this is known as the vibrational quantum number so uh, just we have solved the problem of uh, rotational energies quantum mechanically so we have to solve this pro um, the problem of this vibrational energy uh, quantum mechanics as well because the molecular motion fall under the domain of quantum mechanics so here we have very interesting um, result for v is equal to zero so when v is equal to zero so we still have some non-zero energy and this non-zero energy is known as the zero point energy and this is in accordance with the uncertainty principle because if this energy is zero so the uncertainty and position will be equal to zero and then the uncertainty and momentum will be infinite so this is the requirement of the um, quantum mechanics uh, or uncertainty principle that we must have some non-zero energy at even the zero vibrational state so uh, we have here equation number nine and equation number eight so if we uh, mix these two so we are here at this equation number 10 so this is the vibrational energies of a diatomic molecule so if you take the example of carbon monoxide so the strength constant for, for carbon monoxide k is equal to this one we know the reduced mass is this one so this will give you the strength energy and even the zero point energy is this one if you compare this energy with the um, lowest rotational state so this is 10 to the power minus 4 electron volt and here is a 10 to the power minus 2 electron volt this means that the rotational energies level are far lower in energies as compared to the vibrational energy level and if we compare this with the room temperature energy so uh, the even the lowest rotational state of carbon monoxide lies higher than the room temperature energy it means that the carbon monoxide molecule and most of the um, diatomic molecule exist in the uh, ground vibrational state at room temperature um, contrary to the fact that uh, the um, uh, rotational state are always excited at room temperature so if we uh, find the difference of two energy level so here we have this relation and it shows that uh, the uh, spacing between the vibration energy level is constant if we compare this with the spacing between the rotational energy levels so we see that with this depends upon j the rotational quantum number so as we go on uh, increasing the value of j so the spacing between the uh, rotational energy state go on increasing however uh, uh, in case of the vibrational energy state when we go to the higher uh, vibrational state the spacing between the uh, uh, vibrational state decreases so it means that uh, the simple uh, uh, um, uh, potential of the simple harmonic oscillator is insufficient to explain the rotational energy level of the uh, sorry the vibrational energy level of a diatomic molecule so for that we take help of another potential that is known as the Morse potential 
So here we have the mass potential relation uh, uh, given by this equation number 11, where we have D, this is known as the dissociation energy, and technically it represents the depth of the potential. We have another constant, A, and this is uh, of course related to the uh, D as well, and this represents the width of the potential. So you see here, when you are at the lower energies, we are, we are I mean you are at the higher depth so the uh, width of the potential is lower and when you go to the higher energies that is through the lower depth of the potential so the uh, width of the potential uh, go on increasing so there is here is a comparison between the mass potential and the simple harmonic potential so if you go to the potential of the simple harmonic so this is a complete uh, parabolic potential and the spacing between the uh, energy level that is exactly the same however if you look into the mass potential so there is a departure of the um, potential uh, from the parabolic uh, uh, shape it, the, as we go to the higher uh, vibrational state and also you can note that uh, when you go to the higher uh, potential uh, higher uh, vibrational energy level so the spacing between these energy level go on decreasing which actually resemble the uh, actual situation of the um, uh, diatomic molecule so here uh, if we uh, use the uh, mass potential so we can calculate uh, the uh, vibrational energy level so the vibration energy level is now given by this relation and if we uh, find the spacing between any two of the vibrational energy level so that is given by this and here if we go on increasing the vibrational energy level so this term go on increasing and of course the delta e will go on decreasing so it means that as we go toward the higher vibrational state the spacing between the energy level go on decreasing so this was um, all about the uh, uh, vibrational energy level of the diatomic molecule the next lecture will be about the vibrational energy level of the polyatomic molecule and then we will discuss the vibrational spectra and of course the vibrational spectra consists a contribution from the rotational spectra as well so uh, okay thank you